Avia Quivain by Helen Hay Whitney, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. As a blown leaf across the face of time, your name falls emptily upon my heart. In this new symmetry, you have no part, no lot in my fair life. The stars still chime, autumn and spring in ceaseless pantomime. I play with beauty which is kin to art forgetting nature nor do pulses start to hear your soul remembered in a rhyme you may not vex me any more the stark terror of life has passed and all the stress winds had their will of me and now caress blown from bland groves i know time dreams and i as on a mirror see the days go by in nonchalant procession to the dark. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Chaque baiser ouvre un roman by Helen Hay Whitney. Read for LibriVox.org by Emma Charlotte. I, living love and laughter, have forgot the way the heart has uttered melody a sobbing plaintive cadence of the sea a poet's soul should rest remembering not the inland paths of green the flowers the spot where fairies ring in hermit ecstasy music is born and gay or woefully, lovers of poesy share her lonely lot. For you and me, beloved, crowned with spring, catching love's flowers from off the lap of time, what are the songs my voice has scorned to sing? Ghostly they hover round my heart-wise lips, into a kiss I fold my rose of rhyme, laid like a martyr on your fingertips. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. As a Pale Child by Helen Hay Whitney Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis As a pale child, hemmed in by windy rain, patiently turns to touch his well-known toys playing as children play who make no noise yet happy in a way then sighs again to watch the world across the storm dim pane and sees with wistful eyes glad girls and boys who romp beneath the rain's unlicensed joys and feels wild longings sweep his gentle brain so i Contented with my flowers for stars, Stroll in my fair, walled garden happily, Knowing no gladder game till shrill and sweet, I hear life's cry ring down the silent street, And press my face against the sunlit bars To watch the joyous spirits who are free. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Flower of the Clove by Helen Hay Whitney Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Ah, love, have pity, I am but a child. I ask but light and laughter, And the tears darken the sunlight of my faintest years. By love made desolate, by love beguiled, I waste the spring. Love's harvest wains are piled with poppies and gold grain. I glean but fears of empty hands, grim hunger, and the jeers of happy wives whose loves are reconciled. But mine, ah, mine is like the tattered leaf upon a turbid stream. I have no pride, no life but love, which is a bitter grief. As a lost star, I wander down your sky. Give me your heart, open it wide, so wide. I must have love 
and laughter, or I die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Too Late by Helen Hay Whitney Recorded for LibriVox.org by Jude Upon your stone the wine of my desire is spilled Your poppy lips have grown too pale from fasting Your white hands will not avail The cold eyes of your heart to light the fire I did not think my prayers could ever tire Now like doomed ships they flutter without sail lost in a calm which held no rock no gale now when your chilly smile bids me aspire so without history my soul is slain woman of barren love the wine was red beautiful for your spending not again will the bud blossom where the frost has sped timid you dared not hark where angels sang all all is lost without one saving pang end of poem this recording is in the public domain the supreme sacrifice by helen hay whitney recorded for librivox.org by jude Better than life, better than sea and morn, And all the sun-stained fragments of the day. Ah, more than breeze, than purple clouds that stray Across dim twilights, I the tempest torn, Fighting the stars for glory, who must scorn? Heart drops be spread along love's cruel way, Like scattered petals, on the breast of may better than life i love you i forlorn better than death the sleeping and the peace when warm within the breast of brooding earth my weary heart should give its woes release the pitiful dark remembering not my loss the calm wise years restoring joy for dearth better than death my love, my burning cross. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Malua by Helen Hay Whitney. Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Out of the purple treasuries of night came the dark wind of evening, silver starred, stirred on his cheek. The forest keeping ward breathed with a tremulous silence, and the bright bare moon crowned his adoring brow with light. The exquisite dream of beauty held him hard in a great love, a forest love, unmarred, still unprofaned by human nature's sight. Guarding the temple gates of peace he stood, statue of bronze with pagan heart of stone sudden a dazzling glory lit the wood moon in his soul that dimmed the moon above life was revealed a spring sweet maid alone beauty was woman and the woman love end of poem this recording is in the public domain love's legacy by Helen Hay Whitney, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. As one who looks too long upon the sun when he must turn to earth from flame shot skies, sees all else dark through his bereaved eyes, and yet may watch the rainbow ribbons run athwart the gravity of gray and dun, he holds the darkness dearer for the prize wherein his only pledge of radiance lies when he the vast magnificence must shun so we who play with rainbows having seen the sun's own face we may not hold the west which burns against the bosom of the night but in the afterglow with eyes serene we still may find dear heart the sun's bequest and echoed glory of our passionate light 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. How We Should Live by Helen Hay Whitney Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson How we would live! We'd drink the years like wine with all tomorrows hid behind the veil, which is your hair between two lilies pale. Your slender hands, my heart should lie and shine a crimson rose. We'd catch the wind and twine the evening stars, a chaplet musical to crown our folly, lure the nightingale to sing the bliss your lips should teach to mine. And if the sage declaring life is vain should frown upon the flower of all our days, and chide the sun that knows no tears of rain, he should not tease our heart with cynic eye. The soul's vast altar stands beyond his gaze. When two lives lived, then shall they fear to die? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Extremis by Helen Hay Whitney, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Nay, touch me not, nor even with your eyes hold mine, for I would speak you thus far, aloof and chill and lonely as a star. The hands that urge, the hungry heart that cries, have wrapped my love with love's elusive lies. The lips that burn have laid a ruddy scar Against the truth that stands without the bar, And a blinded faith with passion's mysteries. Night holds a single moon, day one desire, Her golden sun, and life a love supreme Wherein one moment poises, crowned with fire, White with the naked truth. Beyond control tis here, my son, In love's last hour extreme, I hold aloft my bare, adoring soul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Forgiveness by Helen Hay Whitney Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. If I might see you dead, beloved, dead, your false eyes closed forever to the light, Your false smile stilled upon my aching sight, If I might know that nevermore your head, Cruelly fair, could lie upon the bed Of my torn heart, if I beheld the night, Free from your living thought, ah, if I might, Then could my desolate soul be comforted, for this is worst of all the woes you gave. My heart may not forgive. The tired years go, And leave the great love weeping for a grave, Scorned and unburied neath the open sky. I could not love you less to see you so. Loving you more, I might forgive and die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. With Music by Helen Hay Whitney Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Dear, did we meet in some dim yesterday? I half remember how the birds were mute. Among green leaves and tulip-tinted fruit, And on the grass, beside a stream, we lay, In early twilight, faintly far away, Came lovely sounds adrift from silver lute, With answered echoes of an airy flute, While twilight waited, tiptoe, fain to stay. Her violet eyes were sweet with mystery, you looked in mine, the music rose and fell, Like little, lisping laughter of the sea. Our souls were barks, wind wafted from the shore. Gold cup, a rose, a ruby, who can tell? 
Soft music ceases, I recall no more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Alpha and Omega by Helen Hay Whitney. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I died today, and yet upon my eyes a glamour of the gorgeous summer green still wavers, and my brain has kept a keen sweet bird song, glad with light the summer skies are sapphire and a purple shadow lies across the hills no change is on the scene since happy yesterday ah can it mean the body lives when stricken spirit dies the blow has fallen yet i can recall the first of days when this dead heart drew breath a wondrous moon flower waking of a heart strange then as now the moment seemed to part body from soul so like our birth and death so did i gain and so i lost my all end of poem this recording is in the public domain flowers of ice by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the lights within the ice floes are our flowers lily and daffodil and violet beneath these monstrous suns that never set tremble soft rainbows young as earth's first hours ancient as time no balm of gentle showers make for their growth for them gigantic met the immemorial ice and sun to get such blossoms pledge of beauty's bravest powers violet and pale grass green the springtime dies in the soft south to us in this grim world daring with frozen heart and tearless eyes the north's white sanctity fate idly throws these alms a deathless spring of ice enfurled and over all far flung the sunset rose end of poem this recording is in the public domain love and death by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c i can believe that my beloved dies that all her virtue all her youth shall fail and life her rosy life grow cold and pale to bloom again in braver paradise i must believe that death shall close her eyes and hold her heart beyond a heavy veil where silences surround her spirit frail and waste the form where all my loving lies ah god but no and is my love so weak her heart may pause may falter and grow still but not her laugh the color in her cheek that may not fade the catch that lifts her breath sobbing against my heart essay your will these are too dear to fill your grave o death end of poem this recording is in the public domain the message by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c when one has heard the message of the rose for what faint other calling shall he care dark broodings turn to find their lonely lair the vain world keeps her posturing and pose he 
with his crimson secret which bestows heaven on his heart to heaven lifts his prayer and knows all glory trembling through the air as on triumphal journeying he goes so through green woodlands in the twilight dim led by the faint pale argent of a star what though to others it is weary night nature holds out her wide sweet heart to him and leaning o'er the world's mysterious bar his soul is great with everlasting light End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Tempest and Calm by Helen Hay Whitney. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. First came the tempest, and the world was torn. Upon its mighty passion, all the deep trembled before it from the haggard steep to the sweet valley with its brooding corn its foaming lips in expletives of scorn lashed into life the world's eternal sleep then caught with madness in gigantic leap expired upon the heights where it was born and then a hush the dripping tender rain falls in warm tears the thunder could not wake the grief that silence in her soul has furled soft sighs the wind the sea is gray with pain the fullness of a heart too tense to break and deep unuttered sadness in the world end of poem this recording is in the public domain After Rain by Helen Hay Whitney. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The country road at lonely close of day rests for a while from the long stress of rain, dripping and bowed the green walls of the lane, reflect no glistening light, no colors gay has dying summer left the sky is gray as though the weeping had not eased the pain the autumn is not yet and all in vain seems summer's life a blossom cast away the air is hushed save in the emerald shade the rain still drips and stirs each fretting leaf to soft insistence of its little grief the hopeless calm all thought of life denies but hark out through the silence unafraid a robin ripples to the chilly skies end of poem this recording is in the public domain not through this door by Helen Hay Whitney. Read for LibriVox.org. By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Not through this door of elemental calm. Patient, wet woodland, resting after rain. Brooding brown fields that wait the sleeping grain. Not through this door may the wrecked spirit's balm. Come in and take possession. There's a psalm. Nature has crooned to weariness and pain, easing the tumult of the world's worn brain, sweet wholesome mother of the open palm. But the disastrous heart cries out for men, strife where the fight is reddest. Verily, peace comes with fighting with the strength of ten. Here where the world is young with naught to see, but day blow out across the long low sky peace beans and emptiness which rest to die end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Potpourri by Helen Hay Whitney. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. All my dead roses, now I lay them here, shrined in a barrel cup, the mysteries of their sweet hauntings and their witcheries are not more subtle than this jewel clear are not more cold and dead the winter's spear has fallen on their heart a heart so wise with lore of love dead roses beauty lies hid in a perfume still supremely dear roses of love time killed you one by one laughed at my pains as sad i gathered up all the fair petals banished from the sun witness my triumph how the dead loves bless life from my heart which is their barrel cup crowning the winter of my loneliness end of poem this recording is in the public domain Edom Semper by Helen Hay Whitney Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. How shall I hold you by a scimitar, a flashing wit suspended o'er your head? O oh, my beloved, or with lips rose-red, lure you to leth, shall I stand afar? pale and remote and distant as a star challenging love or by a scarlet thread jealousy's wiles beguiled by scorn and dread wounding the heart i love with hateful scar nay i can take no action play no play all my wit falters when i hear you speak all my wise guile with which your wooing strove vanishes as the sun of yesterday i can but lay my cheek against your cheek love me or leave me i can only love end of poem this recording is in the public domain to a woman by helen hay whitney Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Take all of me, pour out my life as wine, To dye your soul's sweet shallows, violent sin. Blaze me a path, and I have walked therein. Strong, unashamed, your timorous hands need mine. As the white stars their sky your lips pale line shall blush to roses where my lips have been i ask no more i do not hope to win only to add myself to your design take all of me i know your little lies your light dishonor gentle treacheries i know i lie in torment at your feet shadow to all your son take me and go use my adoring to your honor sweet strength for your weakness it is better so end of poem this recording is in the public domain aspiration one by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the pale and misty particles of time hover about us scarce our eyes can see youth's far-off dream of what we were to be life's truth which once we would redeem with rhyme has proved instead a world-worn pantomime the running river of expediency has drowned the hopes that fortune held in fee why fall upon the track so many climb 
why strive to speak what all the earth has heard why labor at a work the ages plan life has been lived so oft an outworn thing then hark the time sweet carol of a bird new as a flower and see ah shame to man the endless aspiration of the spring end of poem this recording is in the public domain aspiration two by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the full throat of the world is charged with song morning and twilight melt with ecstasy in the high heat of noon simple to be palpitant where the green spring forces throng eager for life life unashamed and strong this is desire fulfilled exalted free the spirit gains her ether scornfully denies existence that is dark or wrong this is enough to see the song begun which shall be finished in some field afar laugh that the night may still contain a star nor idly moan your impotence of grace life is a song lift up your care-free face gladly and gratefully toward the sun end of poem this recording is in the public domain the gypsy blood by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c he gives me happiness as flowers depend on loyal sun and shower i look to love to give me life why is it not enough divine contentment stretching without end or happy meadows he's my love my friend and peace is in the word you heart's despair sweep like a tempest through my sun-sweet hair wail like a lost soul through my blossomed grove tempest and calm with him my heart might rest lulled by eternal spring the dream is blessed yet the wild grapes you crush make life divine out in the pathless dark all yours i go brave with the purple promise of the wine you you i love because you bring me woe end of poem this recording is in the public domain Not Dead, But Sleeping by Helen Hay Whitney Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis And if I came, ah, uh, if I came again And laid my hand on your forgetful heart Where once it lay so warm Could the pulse start, remembering spring Now, at the sound of rain I do but turn a little in disdain To see the flowers renew their lovely part blooming afresh for memory holds no smart love aches no more to know how it was slain yet if i came to you who heed no more my name upon the wind love's ghost lean near i have a word that only you may hear if you should come to me with dear desire my soul's dry staff should tremble to its core and flame against your touch in buds of fire End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Last Gift by Helen Hay Whitney Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, 
be c what shall i give to her who will not care if i give soul or roses will not know how that for sweets she'll spend light smiles she'll sow i will reap bitter tears if she could wear those tears as stars to sparkle in her hair what shall i give i have not fallen so low i may not lay one gift before i go upon the altar of my heart's despair she will not know yet in my love a king i must be worthy of my crown and throne and so can sacrifice no little thing my life my soul are worthless since her scorn slay we then love on love's red altar stone beggared of all i face the world forlorn end of poem this recording is in the public domain amor mysticus by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c not you nor all the gods that fate bestows can make me swerve so little from my dream across my veil of mystery you seem perhaps a little dearer than the rose perhaps more fair than the long light that flows between the lids of twilight but the gleam of iris on the breast of wisdom's stream is of a radiance that no rival knows my heart is not my heart or it might chance to sorrow for the sorrow in your tears my soul is locked against all circumstance of life or love or death or heaven or hell i have no place for laughter in my years no room where little little love might dwell end of poem this recording is in the public domain the pattern of the earth by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the pattern of the earth so wonderful is more than myrtle very dear to me across the avenue of limes i see a little mist by ghosts made magical tossing across the hills more beautiful than the deep eyes of amber women free of shame and of disdain on some far sea swept by trade winds the sun makes lyrical there is no air the mind may not recall blown from the violet beds of greece and all the moons who drop their shattered petals here live from the days which hid semiramius breezes upon my lips are subtly dear because they bear the burden of her kiss end of poem this recording is in the public domain disguised by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the beggar thoughts pass down the lanes of day and on the thorns that are the hours i find their tatters and their rags infirm and blind they faded in the void and all the way mouth senseless jeers at me i dared not pray for wisdom from these fools who throng the mind and leave no gifts 
but bitterness behind chin upon hand i watched nor bade them stay then wearily and indolently glanced where the thorns fluttered with their flags and lo fragments of cloth of silver gleamed and danced in the late sun and linen white as snow among the beggar thoughts with lowered eyes princes and kings had wandered in disguise end of poem this recording is in the public domain on the white road by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c there's a white white road lies under the swinging moon stretch from the black of the deep to the black of the deep and midway the graveyard lies with its leaves a croon the only sound of the world like a dream in sleep there's a white white grave lies under the graveyard trees hung on the road as a single pearl on a thread and silence waits beast crouched on the rim of the breeze that moans where the only man in the world lies dead End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Wanderer by Helen Hay Whitney. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Wanderer. Have I finished my life? Am I done? Is my heart blood thinning cold that I gnaw the bones of the town? Am I empty and old? My flags are the chimney's grime, tossed on a languid breeze. Have I dreamed of the roaring rhyme, a storm through the trees? The snow in the streets is black, profaned with the city's sin. I know of a star-lit track, where God's hand has been. Have I finished with snow and sun, with the wind on the open plain? that i starve in the barren town is my life in vain end a poem this recording is in the public domain falls by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by sonia falls the black sky stretches to the pallid sea as a false love and a dismantled heart empty of faith and eager to depart he takes her yet once more submissively against his lips then laughing drifts away swiftly within the dawning of the day blindly she tosses up her foam-white hands crying for mercy and the wind her hair lashes the white sailed ships and leaves them bare blindly she hurls her rage against the sands there in the cold sky where her love had lain scornful aloof the sun reviews her pain end of poem this recording is in the public domain a song of the oregon trail by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by larry wilson how long the trail how far the goal last year the moons might come and go like dancing shadows on the snow my heart was light my heart was strong i cared not though the way be long but now the end is you my soul i fear the dark i fear the dread white frost that hovers round my heart the cold high sun and wide apart the frozen pitiless stars above so far so far from my true love and oh i fear i fear the dead i fear their fingers grasping and pale i did not fear the dead last year but now the kisses of my dear the breast of her so kind and warm 
ah heart i must not come to harm how far the goal how long the trail end of poem this recording is in the public domain the apple tree by helen hay whitney recorded for librivox.org by jude the apple tree is white with snow my heart is empty as the day the white hours indolently go gravewood because my love's away months lag then spring and love's return yet once again i seem to see flushed with delight as kisses burn white snow upon the apple tree end of poem this recording is in the public domain silver and rose by helen hay whitney recorded for librivox.org by jude pale as a petulant star she held up her face to his love her spirit from his dwelt afar as the sky from the sea is above yet he gazed till her whiteness was rose dawn bright with the morning above as the sea from the sky wakes and glows so his image was mirrored in love end of poem this recording is in the public domain tomorrow by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by sonia tomorrow tomorrow and tomorrow shall there be perchance a morrow when i may not see your face beside me any more ah no my love my love i cannot let you go like sun in egypt ever kind and fair my heart must wake at dawn and know you there no dread of day which holds a weeping rain no dread of chilly love and bitter pain but ever present ever wise and true tomorrow and tomorrow holding you end of poem this recording is in the public domain the greater joy by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by sonia the greater joy not that young joy who looked with laughing eyes that jocund sprite with open idle fingers stretched to the dawn the dawn whose gold light lingers across the far blue hills of paradise not that young joy but one courageous calm who passed beyond the quiet morning meadows beyond the dawn of life's delicious shadows holds the great sun and moon in either palm in her wise heart she takes that little joy kisses to sleep tired eyes with laughter over pointing to greater joys in heights above her this shall be ours whom fate would fain destroy end of poem this recording is in the public domain the rose-colored camellia tree by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by sonia the rose-colored camellia tree stained by the ardent silver of the stars glitter the leaves a challenge to the day the bright fierce flame of naked scimitars holds still the argent night folded away challenging day yet lovelier than light blushing with dawn the flickering leaves between burn the rose blossoms traitors to the night colour of joy upon the tranquil green brave to the amorous sun who fearing grieves at last the tree's whole heart with love is crowned the rose-red flowers warm against the leaves the rose-red petals sweet against the ground end of poem this recording is in the public domain Goodbye Sorrow by Helen Hay Whitney, 
read for LibriVox.org by Helen Z. Ferrara, Teaneck, N.J. Day that began with a tear, will you end with a sigh? Stay, see the blossoming year, lap up to the sky. Nay, here's a hope for your fear, sweet sorrow, goodbye. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Harbor by Helen Hay Whitney, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. In Harbor, my little boat is in a bay; it swings with gentle motion, and there I lie and watch all day the far-off noisy ocean. The ships go up, the ships go down, and never see me spying. They are the pride and fear of town sails wide and colors flying they are so strong they are so tall they fear no storm no sorrow with brave eyes to the sun they all set sail for some to-morrow sometimes i long to range and roam my harbor life bewailing but little boats must bide at home to gaily speed the sailing End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rosa Mundi by Helen Hay Whitney. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Rosa Mundi. O oh, life that flowered at the very top of the tree, redder than all the roses out of the south. This was the blossom, colored and wrought for me sweeter than scarlet bloom of a maiden's mouth fain would i climb and fain would i reach the flower ah but the tree was tall as the flower was fair weary i grew and slept through the noonday hour winds caught my fate and strewed it over the air end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Ribbon by Helen Hay Whitney, read for LibriVox.org by Helen Z. Ferrara, Teaneck, N.J. Ah, dearest, dearest, not alone, I face the day's white monotone, the fair bright ribbon of the hours, a mountain brook bestead through flowers, runs a dear line from you to you, there is no smallest deed I do through which the ribbon does not run a silver string to pearls of sun so glad i watch the moments fly across the high hung summer sky till in a radiant flame they burn to mark the hour of your return end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Aster by Helen Hay Whitney, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Aster, the little vagrant gypsy flower, has blossomed forth again. Your face against the autumn sky, your face against the rain. The fevered youth of summer days has passed away in tears. The aged winter totters down the pathway of the years yet nodding luring laughing over the tired world's pain and scars joyous i find between my hands your face in esther stars end of poem this recording is in the public domain heart and hand by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by sonia heart and hand singing he smote his heart the woman smiled and love leaped flaming into being wild singing he smote his hands the woman sighed and love grew weary turned his face and died end of poem 
This recording is in the public domain. The Golden Fruit by Helen Hay Whitney Read for LibriVox.org by Nima The Golden Fruit I lack not love, I lack not lovely love, but ah, the apples of Hesperides, the golden apples and the emerald trees, the flower-sweet maidens dancing in the breeze, holds love a blossom with such fruits as these? I gave up love, I gave up lovely love, and sought the island of enchanted skies, with little rainbow rifts of seraph size, round which the flaming sword forever plies against the darkened world of rue and sighs. Alas for love, alas for lovely love, in dreams I heard the beating of his wing, his soft voice, beautiful as sea in spring. Mourn through the empty songs the seraphs sing. Life seemed in sleep more dear than everything. Take me back, love. Take me back, lovely love. Dark winds may drive me o'er thy tyrannous seas. Life is a world that breaks the thing it frees. I would be bound in all thy masteries. Yet, ah! The Apples of Hesperides. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Moth by Helen Hay Whitney. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. To a Moth. Spirit of evil, heavily flying, turning, dropping to earth, caught to the light with brown wings torn and burning whence was your birth was there a cause that ceaselessly turning flying drew you from night all that we know is this the aimless dying killed by the light evil the star that led you spirit of evil out of your dark breeding desire that conquers us man and devil passion's red spark End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Winter Song by Helen Hay Whitney. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Winter Song. Oh, it's winter, winter when you're here, and summer when you're gone. What need of birds when hearts sing clear from dusk of day to dawn? The noble wind, the silver snow, high stars, and, best of all, the red rose hearth, a golden glow, when twilight curtains fall. Who'd cry the heat of summer skies, the bare, despairing sun, the languid flowers with closing eyes, the earth's fair wooing done? The possibilities of spring, the reticence of bliss, love with the winter's argent wing, will scorn the sun for this and a poem this recording is in the public domain youth by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by sonia youth youth and its pensive agonies how soon the restless heart forgets to crave the moon age is too weary for the butterflies spring's rainbow radiance fluttering through sweet skies hope merrily deferred we see the morn we who are old in shattered fragments scorn for laughter and for singing clouds our breast youth take your fill of pleasure for the rest of age is endless sing nor grudge the song youth is so short and age quiet age so long end of poem this recording is in the public domain persephone by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by sonia persephone 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 
her sweet face wanders up to me through this bewildering maze of spring at length she dawns the tyrannous year her little laugh usurps the tear her little song she dares to fling against the black stars merrily persephone persephone her hands lean through the spring to me sweet could i show you in what wise your song has blossomed how the air is mad with gold because your hair tossed golden neath your sea-blue eyes and earth goes laughing with your glee persephone persephone this hour sends out your heart to me child of the dark with soul sun bright ah give me largesse give me may so shall i charm the saddest day and life one ember dawn's delight shall bear your song eternally end of poem this recording is in the public domain Etoile d'enfer by Helen Hay Whitney Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Etoile d'enfer The four wide winds of evening have their stars Fashioned in fire, in purity of snow Tossed to their height by endless avatars These all the righteous know What of the stars of Hades, on the gloom the outcasts see them shine like angels' eyes, and in the living night that is their tomb, they dream of paradise. They know the stars of Hades. They are deeds, wickedly born, which came to good at last. Fair blossoms spring from villainy of weeds. Rest and redeem the past. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Enough of Singing by Helen Hay Whitney Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Enough of Singing Enough of Singing Since your heart is tired We'll leave the lute So long, so long desired And in the silence Speak one quiet word simple as earth forgetting song and bird no more of singing mating time has sped in the broad fields the poppy lips are red crush them beloved drink the lethe deep song being dead what else is left but sleep end of poem this recording is in the public domain Truth by Helen Hay Whitney Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Truth Up from the soul, as a blade of grass from the sod, Springs the intent of the prayer as a cry to God. Blossoms may veil it, or visions with ways uncouth, He sees the ultimate grass blade, the heart of truth. End of poem this recording is in a public domain. The Philosopher by Helen Hay Whitney Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Philosopher The grim immensities are mine. The sunlight on the brook is theirs. I drink the lees of bitter wine. Fate grants a gift to all their prayers i stammer all afire to tell the thoughts that urge for life like pain for them words brim the shallow well like easy drops of summer rain and which ah heaven which is best the little lute for every mood or shrinking coldly from life's test the heights and depths of solitude end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Prayers by Helen Hay Whitney Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Prayers that were birds winging wide 
daring the flame of the sun how have you faltered and died now the day's done prayers must be brave for the dark strong for the chill of the star fearing no fate to embark over the bar prayers of the sun and the moon prayers for the sky and the nest all must reach heaven so soon which shall reach rest end of poem this recording is in the public domain a so sea lover scorned by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c when the red coral of your lip is pale as the bleach sea sand ah wearily wearily will you behold your face your fingers frail gnarled like a wind-blown tree your star-bright eyes blind as a cloudy midnight without moon no more fair necklaces nor scarlet dyes can make you cruel to men for soon so soon your heart will bear the years ah wearily wearily then i your scorn shall still be man and chief turning to free your hands so carelessly carelessly you will be dead to love past all belief still round the slender columns of the palm the moon shall lie in shivering silver pools still shall the trades lash through the summer calm while twilight with her smile the island cools and time forgets your presence carelessly carelessly end of poem this recording is in the public domain in may by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c blithe nature leaned to kiss her favorite child her sunshine hair about her bosom swirled gay baby spring held out his hands he smiled and apple blossoms dimpled on the world end of poem this recording is in the public domain for your sake by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c bid me for your sake not for self or right you alone can wake power to gain the fight in your name i dare aught in earth's great bounds forth my sins should fare leashed like cringing hounds when you touch my hand through your holy eyes i can see the land where is paradise yet i may not go leaving cold and night till your soul of snow sees that mine is white let my heart not break till i kill my sin bid me for your sake fight the world and win end of poem this recording is in the public domain lyric love by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the world deserves its wisdom you and i serene within the shadow crowned with hours cinctured with solitude the bended sky folds us in hues of tulip twilight flowers knowledge is chill your hair is warm with gold a lock lies heavily across your cheek i somewhere hear of darkness pain and cold keep your own world ah love 
stir not nor speak end of poem this recording is in the public domain be still by helen hay whitney read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c be still be still vex not the night with sound the moon has laid her finger on the lake and in the shadows of the wood profound there lies a peace we would profane to break upon the lonely avenue of trees as pearls upon an airy silver string are caught the threaded echoes of the breeze that sets the ruffled leaves a murmuring be still dear heart as though toward death to speak love waits you lily-like with leaves unfurled while on the breast of day night lays her cheek the silence speaks the secret of the world end of poem this recording is in the public domain butterfly words by helen hay whitney read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c butterfly words from the sun in my brain flitting and darting and flitting again gleaming of golden and violet and rose what is the rainbow you spring from and where butterflies daintily poise and disclose whence is the secret of color you bear sun that is ruddy and fragrant with flowers garnered and hid from these desolate hours misty with beauty the silver of spring ah for the ways that are lost to my feet only the dip of the butterfly wing poised for a moment revise me the sweet end of poem this recording is in the public domain music by Helen Hay Whitney, read for LibriVox.org, by Nemo. Music Music has opened her hands, through fingers her jewels are falling, fingers so delicate slender, pales the ghost of a flower. Jewels of crimson, the life ebbing from hearts that are broken, roses and wine and red sunsets, flames of undying desire jewels of azure the sea dreaming of stars and the morning dancing with life then the silence blue of mysterious caves jewels of green and the grass lifts up its hands to the summer hiding insidious serpents fair as the sweets that are sin jewels more bright than the sun music lets fall from her fingers we who have stood in the shadow how may we die for her sake? End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ghost by Helen Hay Whitney, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. You came and you went, and I swept you aside not a trace does my wisdom endure of your words and your beautiful face and the curls of your hair yet your presence a song murmurs ever in hopeless refrain and i wake in the night with my empty hands yearning in vain for the touch of your hair you went and i triumphed I crushed out my heart with a kiss on the lips that are ashen, forgetting spring's wonderful bliss and your tremulous lips. Yet the kisses were ghostly with jasmine, dear jasmine of May, 
the new has the soul of the old is a flame with the way and the touch of your lips you came and you went and the world wearies on with its game my heart never falters or fears at the sound of your name or the sight of your face yet the ghost of our passion stands white in the midst of my heart with your hands and your hair and i know it will never depart passion's ghost with your face end of poem this recording is in the public domain fight by helen hay whitney read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c fight though the bulwarks of your faith may fall life become gray and full of weariness love prove a lie and wisdom bitterness fight for the strife alone avails for all fight and fight on exulting in the light standing alert and upright gleefully seizing life's joys and woes courageously man to the end and master laugh and fight end of poem this recording is in the public domain in tonga by helen hay whitney read for LibriVox.org, by Nemo. In Tonga The windy rain beats, beats about my door. Alas for love, when love goes wandering. The dawn mist rises on the forest floor. Alas for life, when love goes wandering. With wet green leaves the palm trees lash the night. The pitiless trades drive wild gods in their flight. And ah, my lover, moons have come and gone the fighting ended still he lingers on sleepless i hear the demon wind above alas for love when love goes wandering and i must wed with one i do not love alas for life when love goes wandering end of poem this recording is in the public domain This was a song by Helen Hay Whitney, read for LibriVox.org, by Nemo. This was the song. We have forgotten. This the rowers knew, straining within the galley's reeling night. Life bent to breaking, while their great souls grew strong in the ancient purposes of time. This was a song whereby they made their fight laughed as they swung gods how the cord bit through this was a song the pagan lovers heard wakened by flowers in a rose-red dawn through the bright dew they fled like ocean stirred with morning bare and beautiful they ran holding each other's hand through leaves they're gone cleaving the silver pool with flash of bird Carven in stone, Abidus holds it fast. The little eastern dancer with her lute, wild Aaron's fairies crying for the past. They keep the deathless secret of the word hid behind nature's lips, who, grave, remote, guard this from profanation till the last. Not unto us who bide the ebb and flow, the senseless order of the tide of law, we have forgotten to be free we know only the iteration of the day the priceless moon white pearl without a flaw drowns in the muddy stream of worldly woe we take the pretty part and leave the whole lost to our ken the song of nature's youth the great barbaric winds that sweep the soul and leave it emptied of all else but truth and a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Two E D 
by Helen Hay Whitney, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. She wrought her songs in secret ways, yet cared not where they fell. Her soul distilled itself like dews in rue and asphotel. They fell in countless happy hearts made wise by sun and showers, like pollen blown about the earth, conceiving royal flowers. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Dance by Helen Hay Whitney Read for LibriVox.org by Helen Z. Ferrara Teaneck and J. Like little eager children, the tiptoe tulips stand, row upon row of dancing heads in joyous saraband, with live long and long petticoats and happy hands tossed up. The sunshine is the laughter that brings their golden cup. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Vanquished by Helen Hay Whitney Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Heart, here are roses burning with the south. Fairer was her false mouth. Close your tired eyes, the twilight gives you rest. Cool was her snowy breast take of the sunshine nor remember rain love is a cruel pain hush you shall sleep forgetting love's alarms sleep died in her false arms end of poem this recording is in the public domain Tranquility by Helen Hay Whitney, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Do you respect the heavy-lidded flowers that nod so drowsily upon their bed? Can you endure the slow-stepped, dreamy hours that fall, indifferent to gold and red? Have you the key that opens to green arches where trees repeat their prayers in monotone? Then take my hand down life's mysterious marches, and let us walk in silence and alone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Sonnets and Songs by Helen.